Hey everyone, it's Tech Caribou, and I've been using the MacBook Pro 16 inch M1 Pro for nearly a year, and have to say, the experience has been surprising. Tons of hype surrounded this device with the debut of M1 Pro and M1 Max silicone chips, which promised blazing fast performance. Today I'll share my MacBook Pro 16 inch M1 Pro review and whether it's been worth the investment. In my opinion, this device is worth it for a few types of people. If you love consuming online content, this laptop not only makes media come to life, but it also sounds amazing with the six speaker sound system. But maybe you aren't a movie enthusiast and instead are looking for a computer for work or school. As someone who spends hours at a time on this laptop for work, the gains in productivity due to the screen size and performance make this machine a game changer. Before this laptop, I had a 13 inch MacBook Pro and would say my productivity at least doubled as a result of the upgrade. Now, we can't ignore the elephant in the room, performance of Apple's new silicone chip. If you will be doing CPU intensive tasks like compiling programs, 3D rendering, video editing, etc., you'll probably want the extra performance capabilities. In fact, those performance heavy use cases are what inspired this line of MacBooks. Let's talk about the screen. The 16 inch Liquid Retina XDR display is truly stunning. It's hard to appreciate the appearance of the screen without experiencing it in person. But when someone invests this much in a computer, you expect to be wowed and Apple delivered. Images, videos, and websites are incredibly crisp and clear. Compared to the previous 16 inch MacBook Pro, this screen's pixel density is 12% higher, which is what's driving that clarity improvement. That said, I don't think this form factor is for everyone, especially if you are constantly on the go and prefer traveling light. My previous laptop was a 13 inch MacBook Pro and the difference in size and weight did take some time to get used to. In my opinion though, the gains in screen size definitely outweigh this adjustment. This laptop still fits comfortably in a regularly sized backpack, which honestly surprised me. Compared to a 13 inch screen, there is no question the size difference is noticeable. I feel about twice as productive using the 16 inch screen, similar to introducing a second screen on a smaller computer. Everyone expected this computer to be fast given the advancements in Apple Silicon technology. Even with those expectations though, I was pleasantly surprised by the performance. Since using the MacBook Pro M1 Pro, everyday tasks like email, web browsing, and video streaming are incredibly snappy. Beyond that, I've used several power intensive programs for video and photo editing and haven't noticed any major issues or stuttering. When deciding which computer to buy earlier this year, I wanted something that would offer performance capabilities beyond what I needed at the time. Why did I do this? Because there's a good chance this laptop will last at least eight years. I know people whose MacBooks have lasted over 10 years and my previous one lasted eight years. This matters because in seven to eight years, there's no question technology will advance and demand significantly more processing power from computers than it does today. If you buy a MacBook that's more powerful than you need today, it'll probably still be able to handle what you throw at it in seven to eight years. On the other hand, if you got a MacBook model that just meets your needs today, it might struggle to keep up near the seven to eight year mark. As I've used this laptop the last nine months, a few other features stood out. First up, I have to commend the six speaker sound system. If you did a blind test of these MacBook Pro speakers compared to a decent Bluetooth speaker, you'd be hard pressed to tell them apart. As a result, I rarely use my Bluetooth speaker when I have the option to use my laptop. Ultimately though, no one buys a laptop for the speaker system, but it's a nice surprise when it's this good. If you're coming from an older MacBook model, you'll also appreciate the significantly larger trackpad. It's at least 50% larger than the trackpad on my MacBook Pro 13. A larger trackpad is a minor detail, but it's something you'll notice occasionally and definitely enjoy the improved ease of use. Last but not least is the updated assortment of ports. Over the years, Apple opted to remove popular ports such as HDMI and SD card slots. I have to say it was a frustrating move that forced many people, including myself, to buy extra connectors and dongles to recreate these ports. That is until this year's model when they resurrected all the popular ports, including HDMI, SDXC slot, headphone jack, and MagSafe. 
ports are not a make or break feature, but certainly a nice to have and a welcome convenience. When I was in the market for a new MacBook, one of my biggest questions was, is the 16 inch MacBook Pro too big? Before I purchased the 16 inch MacBook Pro, it seemed like it would be an awkward size. But honestly, after using this device for the last nine months, the larger form factor doesn't bother me at all. Whether I'm carrying the laptop around inside or bringing it on a trip, it feels comfortable. Initially, the laptop's weight was noticeably heavier than a 13-inch laptop, but it's something I got used to after a week or so. Compared to Apple's lightest laptop, the MacBook Air, this laptop is about 68% heavier, or two pounds heavier. So if a small form factor is important, this laptop probably isn't for you. Overall, I'm very pleased with this purchase and feel the MacBook Pro M1 Pro was well worth it. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them in the comments section. Thanks for watching.